Welcome back to the STEM Swag Podcast. I'm your host, Temple, and it's all about connecting you with the coolest STEM professionals. And today we are going to one of my favorite places ever. We're going to the stars with a former NASA engineer, a person in aerospace, a person who loves outer space, Miss Susan Martinez. She combines fashion, STEM, exuding whoever she is and not being afraid to be herself. She's the ultimate STEM girl swag, so I am so happy to have her on the podcast today. Please welcome Miss Susan Martinez. Hi, Temple. Thank you so much for having me. I am honored to be on your podcast, and I'm so excited to talk to you and all of your listeners. I am so excited for you to be here. We have been connected for a super long time, and whenever I see your name pop up on Instagram, I'm just like, what is she up to now? What incredible <laughs> things are you doing? And I just... I have so much I want to learn, so I'm just excited to interview you today. Oh, thank you so much. I've gotten to do a whole lot of stuff recently, and I'm super excited to talk about it with you. Yes. So first, give us a kind of synopsis of who you are. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, so I am a payload engineer in the aerospace industry. I work on sending payloads to the moon. Um, I'm working on creating payload infrastructures and what's it going to take to get a piece of science to the moon. And for a little caveat, what is the payload? A payload is science that we send to space. Um, it can be on the ISS, it can be on a shuttle mission, it can go to the moon. We have payloads all over the place and I have built my career out of flying payloads. So a lot of payload stuff, which is really cool. Um, I have my platform on Instagram, which is at Astra Sue. Um, and I get to travel a lot and talk um, about space with a lot of really cool people just like yourself and I get to spread the word about what it's like to be a woman in STEM and the hardships we endure which I'm sure you know very well um, so it's it's like a really cool thing that I get to be able to do this um, on Instagram and I get to meet amazing people like you thank you so much just so many questions. As you know, I want to be an astrophysicist when I'm older. So I feel like this episode was for me <laughs> specifically, but it's also for a lot of other people out there. Growing up, uh, being a girl in STEM, I've researched you and heard you speak about different challenges that you have faced. What were many of the obstacles you faced at being a girl wanting to pursue STEM? Yeah, so a lot of the times when I'm in STEM, I'm doing my job, a lot of the times I'm the only girl. Uh, when I was at my first uh, job at NASA, I was in a lab, I was doing additive manufacturing. It was super fun. Uh, I was the only girl, right? So it's crazy to come from like college where you have a wide variety of people. And even in STEM, there were, were there were other girls, <laughs> right? Um, I went to a very big university. I went to the University of Kentucky and there were 400 people in my graduating mechanical engineering class and only 30 of us were girls. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's hard and you kind of just get used to being the only girl around, which is like not super great for community. So I love the Instagram platform that I have and I've made all these incredible friends and all of my incredible friends are doing other amazing things like Katya is an astronaut and Alexandra just got 30 under 30 today. Like, I know it's amazing. Um, and like through, through Instagram, I met like Kaylee and reinvented and we just went to Paris to talk at SpaceCon and we also did the Space Gala and all of these other things that I didn't have when I was your age, right? I didn't have that when I was in college. I didn't have that when I was decided to pursue STEM. I was the only girl engineer that I knew when I decided to go into STEM. And it was it's crazy to have that kind of environment where yeah. you are kind of I don't, I don't know what I want to be. I don't know who I want to be because I don't, I've never seen it. I don't yeah, see yeah. it in front of me. And then at that kind of in that moment, when I was in college, um, I was like, okay, well, I'll just, I'll just be what I want to be. Like I'll be my own role model. And that's kind of what led into my Instagram in a general sense is kind of make sure that um, girls like yourself, right? Have somebody that say, Hey, I can do this she's doing it, then that means I can do it. Like that's um, like, um, I don't know if you know Naya, Naya Butler Craig. Yes, um, I love Naya, that's my girl. girl. Um, I just met her at the Space Gala. She was one of our special guests. Um, and when I met her, I was like, you are incredible. Like you are so amazing. And I was like, I look up to you so much. And she was like, oh my gosh, 
I look up to you so much. I was like, this is a, like, this is incredible. It was amazing. I, I just, I loved meeting everybody. And it was, it was so cool to just kind of meet all these other people that I'm like, oh, you did the same thing that I did. Like you didn't have anybody to look up to. So you just became that person. And it's kind of a, a hard thing to do. Like you have to kind of overcome this, this fear of like, what if I fail? I mean, I think that all the time. I still think that all the time. I'm six years into my career, almost seven years in my career. And I'm just like, what, what if, what if it doesn't work? Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I think <laughs> a lot of things, like if things had been different, like how it would have affected me, how it would have affected other people in my life. Like it's, it's a lot of things to consider when you go into STEM or thinking about how kind of alone you could be or how you choose to be. It, there's so many variables. Yeah, I, mean, I even answered your question, Temple. <laughs> no, you absolutely did. You went into a lot of stuff that I knew we would end up talking about in some place. Always talking about how a lot of people, including even myself, when there are few women who are older than me, but still not seeing a lot of people who look like me, who are women or who are African American in STEM related fields. So why not be that person for little yeah. girls to look up to because they know that they can do it when they see somebody doing it. Exactly. Um, but it's like staying connected with these people and making connections with incredible women. Let's talk about the Space Gal Gala. Yes, the Space Gala. Oh my gosh. So this was last year's photo. That was me with Camille and Alexandra and my bestie, um, Jessie, who is not in STEM. However, she has been my best friend for 10 years. She is a licensed therapist and she is incredible. So she, yes. she lives all the way on the West Coast. She flew to Florida to be like, I'm going to support you in this like, She's incredible. All, all the way to the left. And then Asia is in the middle. Of course, we, we love Asia. She's <laughs> yeah, awesome. So what was that event? Because you're telling me you met Naya there and there's p women who are speaking there. Is it all about space? Who's going to this? How big of an opportunity is this? Uh, yeah, so um, last year was our first year, and then we just did our second year this year. Um, we had a lot more influencers this year because our reach was so much higher, even though we had some amazing influencers last year. Um, I was not involved last year, but I was the co-host this year of the Space Gal. Um, Kaylee Looney, who is the founder of Reinvented, it's her it's it's a fundraiser for her nonprofit foundation um and they do princesses with power tools they do events where they teach young girls how to use power tools and they're dressed up like like princesses it's really cool uh but they have their their outreach this year was like close to 200,000 kids like it was insane how much it doubled or tripled since the year before um and the space gala was a huge part of that um they did uh, so we had Naya, right? We had Athena, uh, which is Astro Athens. We had Camille. We had myself. Um, and we had Zyla and like Naya. I already said Naya. Um, we had uh, engineering memes. I just love Naya so much. We had engineering memes guy. Um, and we had, oh my gosh, like all of these incredible influencers. And Joan, we had, um, but they were all, some of them were there last year. Um, but we had just this incredible outpouring of like encouragement and um, we had scholarship students. So students could apply to come to the Space Gala for a free ticket with their scholarship application. And we had about 21 scholars and our, our amazing sponsors donated the extra tickets from, so they would buy a table and they're like, oh, we're only gonna use three tickets. The other five tickets went to the sponsors. So they yeah. were actually yeah. funding these students to come to the Space Gala um, when they may not have had the opportunity to come. And a lot of these people wanted to apply to come to the Space Gala because they wanted to meet like Camille or Joan or myself or all of these other people. Yeah. And it was, it was incredible. Like it was so amazing. Last year, <laughs> I might cry, just that way. Um, last year, there was this girl that came up to me and she was like, I am a senior in high school. And I decided to go into STEM because of you. Aww. It was amazing. And that happened again to me this year. Um, we had, there were four girls in particular that were like, we came to meet you. Like we applied to come to as a scholar. And they were all scholars. Mm -hmm. It was awesome. Like it was so incredible. The, the amount of like, we don't really realize it, Temple. Yeah. But the amount of influence that we have just from Instagram, it, it translates yeah. very differently over, over you know, like 
there's influencers, right? Lifestyle influencers, you buy their stuff, you know, whatever. But then there's like people like, like us and Camille and Joan who are literally inspiring changes in people's lives because they feel encouraged to do the thing that they didn't think they could do. And like the Space Gala really exemplifies the fact that these girls are seeing their heroes or yeah. heroes, <laughs> like in real life and it was it was amazing and everything was about being a woman in stem everything was purple like lilac purple and i love the color yeah, it's my favorite color too um and like the dresses were amazing and the food was great everything was just spectacular we have to get you there next year yeah please look please let me come next year i Absolutely. heard games that I recognize from just following them on Instagram and again being such a big inspiration to me and as we know other girls as well. Um, really quickly, let's talk about your STEM journey. I always like to know what pushed you to pursue STEM to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so I kind of always have been interested in engineering. My dad is a mechanic and he from a very young age of, of me and I have a twin sister so we're both engineers um a lot of people don't know that we're identical twins so it, it's actually kind of funny um but he had always encouraged us when we were very young to like be able to fix our own cars and do all of these things with our cars um which led into kind of just this engineering mindset that we both kind of had just leading into our lives in a general sense um and then I've always been interested in space um and I went to community college which is a great idea if anyone is out there pondering about community college do it it's awesome um so I did my first two year at community college and I got my NASA internship in between the time I graduated from my community college and I started at my university so that summer in between was when I was at NASA for the first time oh, wow. as an intern um let's see what for the first time, yeah. For the first time, yeah. So um, I actually came back as a Pathways. So a NASA Pathways is a part-time, full-time civil servant, and I'll explain. Um, so when you're working, you are like a full-time NASA employee. You're a civil servant. I had a badge, everything, but I wasn't done with school yet. So when I was back in school, I would take leave without pay, which is basically just an extended leave of absence so that I could... <laughs> finished college. Um, and so I worked a summer and then I went back to school and then I worked a spring summer and then I graduated the next summer and started full-time July, sorry, July, 2019. Um, and I worked at NASA until September, 2022 or July, 2022. And then I work now at the company that I work at now. (laughs) How does one get a NASA internship? Because I want my mom is like, Temple, I know you love that. You need to find a NASA internship. I love going to all the space centers whenever I'm around them. So how would I or somebody else interested get an internship? Yeah. So there's actually, it's, it is difficult to get an internship, but it's very easy to apply. Um, You make an account on nasainternships.com and they have three sets of interns. There's summer interns and then there's fall interns and there's spring interns. You can take a semester off and go be an intern if you want to. Um, I did that. I took a spring off and to finish up my, my co-op because I had to reach a certain number of weeks in order to qualify. It was like a weird thing. Anyway. Um, so the summer internships are 10 weeks and fall spring internships are each 16 weeks. And so you get paid. It's not an unpaid internship. You, you get paid, uh, which is fantastic. I know there's a lot of companies out there that don't pay their interns, which I think is ridiculous. I don't know how you can live somewhere and not pay your interns. Anyway, um, so you just go and apply. You just decide which center you think is best for you. And you look at the internship, um, like the descriptions of the internships, and then you just apply to what you think is best. Um, a word to the wise, though, I will say at the very bottom section, there is a, why do you think I'm the best for this internship? Or why do I think I'm the best for this internship? And that is the most important part of the application. So just so you know. Tips out there. Could mm-hmm. you do that as a high school student like I am, or do I have to wait until college? No, I actually, when I was an intern, there was a high school student in my intern group. Um, they, I think the high school students are unpaid though, because it's usually like for like locals in the area. Um, but I would recommend checking that out if you live somewhere close to a NASA center. Like if you are, you, you're called a volunteer intern, but it's, it's the same thing. Okay. All right. Well, 
tips out there to everybody. Um, now I know, and what I was really excited for, you know, I love space, love everything, but another thing that you are that I'm so excited to talk about, STEM Girl Swag, you know, it's my movement, show that STEM is fun and cool, you can still be girly, you can still be into yeah, all this, and you can also be into STEM. I know you do your own nails. You always talk about having your lipstick on at work, not yep. being afraid to be the girly girl that you are. That, see, right there, that influence that. And my Louboutins. <laughs> just so inspirational to girls out there who think maybe, oh, I have to be this certain persona. Mm -hmm. I have to be a nerd. I have to have my glasses, suspenders, lab coat. But you show up <laughs> looking how you do and just being incredible. So what? how do you... I don't even know what question I want to ask. I just want you to talk about that. Absolutely. I got you, girl. Um, yeah. So a big part of my self, just in a general sense, my my personality, my confidence has, has always been just a little bit more on the fashion side. And I, I don't look at pictures of me from college because that does not exemplify how I really am. Those were rough days. Okay. We would, we would, they were rough. Okay. However, <laughs> when I, um, gotten to, you know, adulthood and I had some more time and I wasn't sleeping in the library. Um, you know, it became like a huge part of who I am. And I found that there's a lot of, there's a lot of stigma around it. Like people don't, don't really, it's not that they don't care. It's that they feel like, um, whatever the situation is, is it'll be bad for them. They'll get made fun of. Um, or if I was in a manufacturing uh, situation when I first started at NASA and like they were like jeans and t-shirt jeans and t-shirt that's what everybody wears jeans and t-shirt and I was like okay well I'll wear long pants because I have to for for manufacturing purposes and I had my PPE and everything but I was like I'm not gonna just wear jeans and t-shirt um, and everybody thought it was weird <laughs> and I usually have like um, like I wear like a purple highlighter that I really really like I wore it at the space gala um, and I remember one time one of my coworkers he goes what is on your face and I was like what are you talking I was like oh I was like this is like make like it's make like it's highlighter and he was like it's purple and I was like yeah it's purple like I love purple and he was like okay and just walked away <laughs> whatever so it's like kind of you know it's a stigma around wearing makeup and like nice clothes or something that makes you stick out even yeah, more yeah. than you already do as being a woman in STEM right um I also have glasses my eyes are terrible. I need to get LASIK, but my glasses are like thick. <laughs> so they're thick. Um, I have, I wear contacts all the time. And so there's been a couple times that I'm like, Oh, I had to wear my glasses. And they're like, Hey, you look like a woman in STEM today. And I'm like, Oh, well, what does that really mean? What do I look like any other time? Like, yeah. I was like, what is that? What is <sighs> come on guys. Like, mm, yeah. come on. Um, and like, I have a bunch of really, like I'm wearing right now, I have a bunch of really cool space earrings and I just kind of went searching for all of these things that are just space themed space related anything tertiary to space at all like jewelry yeah. purses um one of my one of my favorite purchases that I've ever made was the Prada Kaye astrology bag because it has stars and moons on it um and I wear it all anytime there's a space event I, I pick that back because I was like this is my favorite purchase I've ever made ever and I've gotten so many comments yeah. about like oh you're um, really into space and I'm like yeah <laughs> I, I kind of am <laughs> like I really am <laughs> I have this a few years ago, I think like 2019, 2018, Coach did a thing where it was like yes. NASA. So I have a NASA Coach backpack, and that's my travel backpack. Anytime I'm on a plane or I'm going on a road trip, that backpack is on me. And I also got these NASA Times Coach shoes, and I think I've only worn them oh, once. Yeah. They stay up in my closet because I feel like I can't wear them. Like, they're collectible to you me. You gotta wear them, girl. You gotta wear them. But yeah, it's, um, it's just been like a whole big part of my my personality and also like my journey of becoming confident as a woman in STEM rather than being not, not ashamed. Cause I don't think women that wear like traditional women in STEM stuff are ashamed of it. I think that they're just worried about some of the backlash, honestly. And I, I kind of took that and just ran the opposite with it. I was like, I'm going to be as, you know, noticeable as I possibly can. And it has helped me with my confidence. And it also has worked very well with me. I made a video once and I don't know if you saw it, but um, my 
lip, like my lipstick, I used yeah, to wear red yeah. lipstick all the time, actually helped me get my job at NASA, which sounds really weird. Um, but what happened was this guy who I talked to and met at an event remembered me only because I was wearing red lipstick. <laughs> and he was like, there's a girl, she wears red lipstick. You have to help me find her. And it was the, to the intern coordinator. This was after I'd been an intern. And she was like, oh, no, I know exactly who you're talking about. And he was like, we have to hire her. We have to hire her. So that was like a big reason of how I ended up at NASA was this guy like that I had talked to. And he had been impressed by me and the works work that I was doing and the words that I was saying. But the only thing he remembered was that I was wearing red lipstick. So it was like a big part of like my identity for a while yeah. as well. Absolutely. Helping you stand out. And of course, like being different helps you stand out among a crowd of people who try and be regular. So yeah. always try and be yourself, I think is a really important thing. Absolutely. Um, okay. So right now I told you earlier that we we're going to play a game. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, so we're going to play a game called show and tell. Okay. And it's where I'll show you a picture. And you're going to tell me a little bit about it. Okay. Okay. Sounds All great. Right. So let's go with the first one. Oh my gosh. Um, so this is my very first internship at NASA. Um, I, so to be clear, I've always wanted to be a pilot. Um, okay. And I was, I had this friend in high school that was always like, oh, I want to go skydiving. And I was like, okay, I'll go fly the plane and you can do the skydiving. I'm never going to do that. I'm never going to do that. And she was like, okay, you know, whatever that works. Um, and then one of the interns, the year that I was an intern uh, did uh, parachute packing on the side just for fun here in in Huntsville um and he was like okay we're getting a big group of interns together um like who's in and I was like okay I'm gonna do it and I like impulsively was like I'm in I'm in um even though that is literally nothing I've ever desired to do in my life ever and uh I was already here at NASA it was the first time I'd been away from my family for a long time it was the first time I'd been away from my twin it was the first time I lived by myself. So I was doing and trying all of these new things here at NASA. And I was like, why not? Let's do it. It was the most exhilarating thing I've ever done. <laughs> it was incredible. I was, I was so scared. I was so scared the whole time up until the point where I was even, when I jumped out of the plane, I was terrified and I screamed and screamed and screamed. And the poor guy, because I did, a, you did a tandem jump because you have to, right? Uh, the poor guy that was attached to me was like, you almost busted my eardrum. I was like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> like, I'm so sorry. But it was, it was exhilarating and it was so cool. Haven't done it since, but it was amazing. <laughs> I think I'm with past you and not mm -hmm. doing it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think yeah. maybe the time comes, it's like in the moment, but as of right now, today, no, thank you. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, I, I get that. <laughs> Let's see the next. Oh my goodness. Okay, so this was my first day of my senior year of college, and I had gotten lucky enough to uh, register for a class. This is the first time I'd ever done the class, and it was a welding and machining class. So this was my first weld I ever did um, on my very first day of my last year, or sorry, last semester of college. So this is my this is my first last day of college ever. And we got to do, it was, a, it was the worst weld. If, if you like zoom in on that picture, like it's, it's embarrassing. Don't look at the weld. Um, but it was, it was so much fun because I've always wanted to learn how to weld. And we ended up learning how to machine on the same semester. And we actually ended up building our robot. So we did the NASA robotic mining competition as my senior design project and other teams um, that were doing senior design were doing other things and they were getting help from the university and the manufacturers at the university. And we were like, no, we're going to do it ourselves. So we actually built and welded and machined our robot, the entire thing, because all of us in my group was able to get into that class. It was so cool. Wow. That, wow. Just doing it. Oh, we're good. We got it. Yeah, we're like, oh, we got it. Don't worry. We're fine. <laughs> my professor was like, are you sure? And I was like, yeah. I was like, don't worry, we got it. Because there was like six of us and all of us were in the class. Like we had all managed to get into it. It was it was awesome. Yeah, I, I will have so much fun doing that. <laughs> all right, I have one more picture. Oh my goodness. Okay, so this was when I was in the reinvented uh, Princess of Power Tools magazine. That was last year. I was Ray, as you can see. Um, and this was actually behind uh, NASA Marshall. So this was in one of their scrap yards, which is very on point for Ray. Um, oh, okay. I have done quite a lot of um, cosplay in a past life when I was in high school. Um, so I actually made the Ray costume myself. And I also made the staff like from the like the back of the picture. Yeah. 
the staff, I, I also made that. So we um, went out and basically the concept of my Princess with Power Tools um, section was, what if Ray was a rocket scientist? So there I am, you know, scavenging like Ray does for parts in the rocket engines that were in the scrapyard behind one of the buildings at Marshall. I love that so much. I'm a big Star Wars fan. Oh, me Maybe too. <laughs> What's your favorite Star Wars movie for everybody out there? Okay, do you mean like original trilogy or like? Oh, oh god, I don't know if I can pick. Um, so of the classics, um, episode f- four is my favorite. Episode four is my favorite, of course. Classic, just established everything. Uh, but of the new ones, Rogue One is a masterpiece. Ooh, I think okay. that is one of the best movies that they've made in the last couple of years. I feel like. I may get a little bit of hate for anybody out there. I did get hate many, many times saying no, this. Like- <laughs> I am a very big prequel person. It's because you're young. It's because you're young. And because those were your Star Wars. You were alive when they came out. Prequels. No, I wasn't alive when the prequels came out. Prequels were like early 2000s. Oh, you're so young. I saw those in the movie theaters. But it was like the newest Star Wars when you were young right so i watched the original trilogy with my parents because my parents saw them in theaters yes, um, and then my earrings fell out. um and so that was like that was i love those the original trilogies are amazing and then i saw the new ones in theaters as well but i was an adult already so it was like less spectacular i guess i mean the, the movies were still amazing but like it was more nostalgic rather than being like wow this is the first time i've ever seen star wars amazing yeah <laughs> Well, hey, anybody out there listening, don't hate on our choices of Star Wars movies. The prequels are also amazing. So it's not like, I, I don't, I, I'm, I'm with you on that one. I, I feel like the prequels are also great. Thank you. All right. I have one more question before we go, before we close out. If you were going to the moon and you had your little moon kit, mm. what three things are you taking with you? Oh my goodness. Um that's a great question. I've never thought about this. So um, a little background, right? Um, my job is sending payloads to the moon. So we have to think about all the things that we have to take to make sure that a payload stays alive, right? What do they need for thermal? What do they need for power? What do they need for data? You know, we have all of these things that we have to think about. Um, but I've never thought about what I would take. That's that's a great question. Um, let's see. Let's see. Um, I think I would take... Some noise canceling headphones. <laughs> okay. I don't think the moon is very loud. I actually don't know. That's that's a great thing. But if I'm up there with anybody else, I'm probably gonna take some noise canceling headphones. Um, I'm gonna take. I can't take my dog, right? That's I can't take my dog. Um, <laughs> um, oh my gosh, you've stumped me. I don't know. Um, my phone. I'm gonna take pictures. Something yes. I'm, gonna with, I'm gonna take pictures of the moon because I'm on the moon, right? That's amazing. Yeah. Um, and I can call home. I guess not really, yeah. not really. But we can use the com relay on the lander and and call home. Um, I don't know. I'd probably take something like really sentimental that I want to bring home, like uh, maybe like my wedding ring because I'm married. So like maybe something like incredibly sentimental to me, or maybe. Something that's incredibly sentimental to like my mother, like that would be interesting. Or my dad, he, my dad loves space. So I don't know. I'm going to have to get back to you on that third one. Okay. I, I, I yeah, yeah, but uh, I this was a few, maybe 2020. I collaborated with Girl Scouts and they were like, oh. what was I had to take a picture with all this stuff. I think I had my headphones. I had some records to show like what music. I wouldn't bring the records, but I would show the music. Oh, and yeah. Flag box. I had a lot of different things. So I like a remember. Voyager disc type situation. Yeah, yeah that. So, um, <laughs> but this is, this, is, this is the podcast, Hurt the Dog, that you may yeah. bring to the moon. Um, but thank you so much for joining me, Susie, Susan, whatever you want to be called. You are such an inspiration to me and other girls. Not even. All right, before we go, there's one thing that I get all my guests to say on the podcast, because as we talked about earlier, you exude STEM girl swag. So can you please say STEM girl swag for me and for everybody else out there? Absolutely. STEM girl swag. Yes. All right. Thank you so much. And tell everybody where to stay connected with you. 
Yeah, you can follow me on Instagram at at Sue, and I also have a TikTok, but I don't post on it, so. <laughs> all right, well, thank you so much for being an inspiration to all of us, and it was incredible to have you on the podcast. Thank you so much, Temple. I had an amazing time. I can't wait to do this again. You guys know where to find me at IG at Just Temple to stay connected with me for more information on the podcast, justtemple.com. Subscribe, like, and comment. Tell me your favorite thing that you learned about space today, about being a NASA engineer, or just anything incredible. Maybe what's your favorite Star Wars movie? Tell us down below, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.